Hallelujah, hallelujah, beloved. This is the day of the Lord. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's have the Lord is our channel, fortune, our God, and we will trust. It's time for the word of the Lord. Anybody want the word? Anybody ready for the word? How have you waking? Yes, you're in. Yes, you're in session. You're in session with the word. Just give me, um. Where is it, Papa? What am I looking for? I hear him saying Romans, so I'm somewhere in Romans. <laughs> I'm somewhere in Romans. I hear him saying Romans, going to Romans, but I cannot even, because my internet's really slurry on the computer. Anyway. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Them that approve of them that do the same. Something like that. Them that approve or who approve of them that do the same. I heard the Lord saying, Of them that approve of those who do the same. Where are we going? Lead me and I will follow. Uh -huh. I was okay, I was right. I need to stop doubting him like that. I need to stop doubting his voice. Romans one thirty one. I did hear hear him say Romans 1 but I was just like Romans we hear alright so what the Lord saying of them that approve that those who do the same I heard the Lord saying of them that approve of those that do the same and I heard him saying you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve two masters you will love one and you're going to hate the other. Fills up and that's why hatred fills up in people very quickly. People love one side and they hate the other. And normally there's a hatred kind of thing going on because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spirit. And if the one side is being the way that the flesh wants and they want to more gravitate towards their fleshy side, then they're going to love that side. But if the other side is more gravitating towards God in the spirit realm and bringing conviction to the spirit of what they're doing in the flesh, then they're going to go to that side if they want God, but then they're going to run from the spirit side if they want the flesh so easy the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but what powers principalities where spirit seated in where high places uh-huh doing what they're seeking to corrupt man so they're always at work seeking to corrupt man. The Bible tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice and to love the Lord is to obey him. He said, do you love me? Jesus said, do you love me? Keep my commandments. Do you love me? And upon these two hang the Lord and the prophets. Love thy God and love thy neighbor. First five, second five. It's so easy. But if we're wrestling against flesh and blood, that means that we're going to have a battle. And the battle is waged in the realms of the spirit. And the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. Where's the kingdom of heaven? Yeah, it's not up in the sky coming down. Like, you know, well, like how people were looking up, looking to see if the kingdom of heaven was coming. The kingdom of heaven is within. Kingdom of heaven is God. 
The kingdom of heaven is a spirit man. That's birthing things from the spirit realm. Out through us, the vessels. So, the Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven is within. And the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence. And the violent take it by force. When you have to fight for something, there's a war that's waged. You have to fight. You want it. You're going to have to fight for it. If you want it, you're going to have to push for it. The Bible tells us even as there's a war, war broke out in heaven, Michael and the angels fought against the dragon and his angels. What's that about now? Now we have war going on where? In the spirit realm. We've got a war going on inside of us. And then we've got a war that happened in the beginning. The end is revealed in the beginning. So... Michael and the angels fought the dragon and his angels, and there was found no place in heaven for them. Why? Because Satan said he will ascend above the throne of the Most High. He will ascend, he will place himself on top, he will give the orders, he will he will lay out a new plan, he will Put a new standard because he wants to be like God. Satan said he will ascend above the throne of the Most High. He will be like the Most High. And who's the Most High? Jesus Christ. So, there we already have the opposition. We already have that war that was waged. We already have that fight that was being waged we already had that fight that happened from the very beginning um. okay so we had that fight that, that was waged from the very beginning and now we've got well we've got the rebelling one who is who satan He's the one. He's the rebelling one. He's, that's why he's called the father of lies. The Bible says when he speaks, he speaks like if he's speaking his native language. He's speaking lies like if he's speaking his native language. You know when someone can speak their native language, it's fluent, it's thrown to them. For him it comes naturally. Satan's language is a bunch of lies. And his lies are... are, are Position to do one thing. His lies are to get us to disobey Jesus Christ. His lies, or God himself, his lies are to get us in direct disobedience to God. And when someone's lying, they're trying to convince you of a truth that's not there. They're trying to convince you of something that is not true. And if you believe it, then you work in it. Remember, the mind is where it all takes place. Whatever you believe is lie or truth, it's received as what? Knowledge. And then, did I share it? Hey. And then, then we have knowledge... Whatever you receive up here, okay, uh -huh, I receive it. It's information, whether it's true or it's a lie, it's received and it's called what? Knowledge. I'm going to block this guy. I'm going to block this guy if he doesn't stop with the, um, the okay. And I'm going to tell him that. Is that the... I said the okay, the okay, the okay. Stop with the okay. Your brain is not dead. It's just irritating my spirit because it's like a kind of a mocking kind of thing, you know? Like, okay, 
in this kind of way. No, it's a yes or amen. So, Satan is the adversary of our souls. He is the one that started the whole back now. He's the one that started the whole chaos, the whole confusion. He's the one that opposed God. And now he knows that he's been kicked out. Of course he does. He's, he's been kicked out. He knows. He knows that he's been kicked out. And he knows that there's no way that he's going back in. He's not going to get to go back into heaven. But he knows that God loves us. He knows that we have the chance to get into heaven. To be where he cannot be. The Bible says where there is jealousy. There's every kind of evil. Mm -hmm. Where there's jealousy, there's every kind of evil. So Satan is jealous that we're getting a chance to go back to heaven after this body. So the Bible says that there was a war in heaven, heaven and heaven. Michael and the angels fought against Ragnar and his angels. And there was found no place in heaven for the dragon and his angels. Now they came down to the earth having great anger against the woman and her seed. Now if you're looking in a physical sense, it's the uncorrupted seed or the untainted seed of humanity. It's the, if you're looking in the spirit realm, it's the church, and the church has filled up with the fire, which is a baby, which is who? Jesus Christ. No, not Jesus, the baby in the manger, but we're just looking in uh, relation to the virgin carrying the male child. The church is the one that's birthing the things of God. It's so easy. Come on. I want somebody to eat some meat. So the church is is birthing the male child. It's bringing out whatever is of God, who is Jesus Christ himself, who is where? Inside. That's why we say the kingdom of heaven is inside. The Bible tells us that the word is near us. Where? It's in our mouth and it's in our heart. Hmm. What does the Bible say about confessing and being saved? Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you shall be saved. When you go to people, what do you proclaim? The kingdom of heaven has come near. He's about to preach to you a word. And if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth glory hallelujah the kingdom of heaven is able hallelujah to to greet you is able to come to you amen see how that is so in the beginning god and then in the beginning a war And now Satan came down having great anger against the woman and her seed. And if we're looking into the deep, if we're looking into the meat, because we're not babies to be bought and fed. We're not babies to continually just drink milk. We go eat some meat now. So... The woman is church and the baby are the things of God that the church is birthing in a very hard time, which is the contractions, the opposing factor, the unseen but felt factor. We have an enemy of our souls, people. So I heard the Lord saying that you cannot serve two masters because one principality or invisible power is here for the ruin of your souls.
and the other invisible principality and sovereign power is here for the salvation of our souls. All right. So one wants to save us, and one wants to kill us. Do you hear me? One principality wants to save us, and the other wants to destroy us eternally. All right. Well, it's, it's clear here, but I'm not appropriately dressed for that. So we're just going to put it down. And we're just going to just continue the way that we are. So I heard the Lord saying that the enemy of our soul, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, he hides in the dark. He, he likes to hide away from the light because he knows that if he comes into the light, if darkness comes into the light, what happens to darkness? Go on. What happens to darkness, people? Darkness disappears. If we have darkness and light comes in, darkness cannot exist, no exist comfortably where light is. So it's so easy to see where goodness is and where evil is, they don't mix. Where God and Satan is, they don't mix. All right. Let's go on. So the accuser of, our, of the brethren, the accuser of... Why does it say the brethren? Who are the brethren? Uh, are we going into Jamaican style or something? What, 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 what are we talking about? Remember the Bible tells us in the book of Romans 8 that Jesus Christ is the first of many brethren. So if we're looking at him in the operating as the son of God, and as many as are led by the spirit of God, as sons of God, then he is like a brother if we're looking at him as just the son. So when it says, the brethren, <laughs> I forgot the word that I was going to say. Oh, the first of many brethren. So when we say the brethren, it's now Jesus Christ, the first. So he, he did, he, he did the perfect example. Perfect demonstration of what we're all to become in him. So the Bible tells us that he's the first of many brethren. So whatever number you came on the earth, and if you are a born-again Christian, or if you are filled up with the fire of God and he's leading you as a Christian, you are that number of the brethren made in the image of Jesus Christ. Yeah? Don't ask me what number I am on the earth. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe seven billion something. I don't know. Just chose the seven because I like seven. I really don't know. So, we're the... He was the first of many brethren... That are being conformed or changed into the image of Him as God. And then that's what we are. We're being conformed or changed. So now we've got the enemy of our soul, Satan, big head. That's so funny. That thing's going up and down my nose. So, Satan's, Satan, Satan's big head. <laughs> We've got the enemy of our souls, Satan, who's against the seed of the woman, 
and those be the people of Jesus Christ who are changing into Christ because the devil hates Christ the devil hates God that's why he started with the war all right let's go on so now we have the enemy of our souls battling where's he battling is he showing up and throwing some punches what is he doing what is Satan doing? Where is he attacking the mind? He's, atta he's attacking in there. The mind. The battle is in the mind. It begins there. Whatever you receive, good spirit, bad spirit, whatever kind of thought you receive becomes what? Words. And then when you release what has happened, what is, what is it that happens? It manifests. Oh, what as a man think it, so he is. There it is again. The word. What do you think with? As a man think it in his heart. So your heart has a mind? Mm. Mm. Moving on. So Satan attacks the mind because he knows that's where you're going to receive. You're going to say, yes, that's knowledge. Where is a lie or truth? And then it stems to your heart and it becomes a belief. It's a belief now. Now you're ready to do this thing with all your soul, all your heart, and all your mind, and all your body. Because whether a lie or truth, you received it. The Bible tells us that now that the, the, the father of lies, so we're just going to use this now um, in demonstration of us receiving lies. So we're going to receive Satan's lies in this example. So the Bible tells us that the father of lies is Satan. He's the accuser of the brethren because he's always looking for faults. Because we're being changed into Jesus Christ. And if he could just find some accusations, that's going to tick off God. Because Satan already took, took, took off God. He already ticked off God. So, um, it's like a reminder that we're not being turned into people of him, God. But we're being turned into more of the devil. Devil's people. God does not like that. So, so, the Bible tells us that now that Satan is always looking for an accusation, and he, he loves to accuse, right? He loves to accuse. That is his thing. He is the accuser of the brethren. Now he dwells in the dark. And the brethren is in the light. But if the brethren decides to go in the shadows or in the, the dim or approaching the darkness, if the brethren who are being turned into Jesus Christ himself or being turned into God himself desires, remember the first example, was us gravitating to either flesh or spirit. So if the brethren is turning into Jesus Christ himself, not, I'm talking about inside out, okay? So if we're turning into Jesus Christ himself, then how is it we're going to get to that side where the accuser of the brethren is? It means we're going to have some kind of desire Towards the flesh. We're going to have some kind of desire. Towards the flesh. So we're going to approach the darkness. And the Bible says that this is the condemnation. 
that the light of the world is come into the world, Jesus Christ, God himself. But men loved the darkness because their deeds were evil and their deeds were in the dark. If your deeds are evil and it's in the dark that you can do those evil deeds without light shining to remind you of what you're doing or to, for anybody to see or to be convicted of that thing. You ain't going in the light. So, we have a couple situations now we have satan waiting in the dark just waiting waiting for us to just enter there his lair the dragon's lair darkness and then we're here trying to be led by Jesus Christ in the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, the Rock HaKodesh, Jesus Christ Himself, Yahweh. And the Holy Spirit is trying to lead us towards the things of the Spirit. But then, here's the word. Now comes the accuser of the brethren, the adversary of our souls, Satan himself. What is he going to do? What does he want to do? He wants to tempt us to enter into the dark. Because it's in the dark that he can have his way. If he comes into the light, he's going to be exposed. So he needs to tempt us into doing something Contrary to him. Um, contrary to God. Into doing something contrary to God. He needs to tempt us into doing something that he says. Not what God says. And that's why we see the temptation of Jesus Christ. When he said, um, Satan told him, well, now he's feeling extra special. Because he thinks that God is in a body of Jesus Christ. He could just knock him out plain, right? So he's saying, hey, you're hungry? You fast for 40 days. Turn those rocks into bread now. You're feeling like you're not yourself. You're feeling like you're worthy. You're nothing. You're weak. You're nothing. Well, go up to the pinnacle of the temple and commit suicide. Jump down now. Then the devil didn't stop there. He's like, okay, okay, okay. I'm feeling sorry for you. Bow down and worship me. And, and I'll give you the best of the kingdoms of the earth. See what Satan did? Do you see what he did? So he's tempting, tempting, because he knows when we're weak in the flesh. That is his forte. That is his, that is his arena. He loves that. Because he knows that... Um, he knows the weaknesses of the flesh. He gave in to his own um, self. Very verse with it. He made the rules. He, he, he made the systems. He directed the systems. He made the rules, he directed the systems, he, um, fashioned a lie. In just a second, okay? He made the rules and he fashioned the lie. So he knows very well. He knows extremely well what it is to be tempted in the flesh in any way. Whether it be with food, with money, with sex, with 
flesh with substance with rebellious things, recklessness, whatever. He knows Satan made the rules for rebellion. So now he's got he's in the dark, but he wants us to come over in the dark because the accuser of the brethren is in the dark. And he knows that if he can just get us in the dark, he can accuse us. Because going in the dark means um, gravitating towards the flesh, towards evil, towards rebellion. And we're moving away from God. That's what he wants. Into the dragon's lair and the dragon can eat you. So Satan knows that if we enter into the dark, he can get us, and it's going to be, you see, once our, once our flesh indulges, it's hard to break free. That's why we have something called addiction in all sorts, all sorts of ways. Whether it be pornography, whether it be sexual promiscuity, whether it be promiscuity, whether it be rebellion, recklessness, whether it be gambling, it may be um, substance abuse, drug abuse, it may be um, people pleasing, um, there's all sorts. It's addiction. So now, we're, we're in the middle. What makes us a good individual or a bad individual is which side we go. Are we going to go into the dragon's lair in the dark? Give him, give him more rope. Let's imagine him as a snake to coil us in, squeeze the life out of us. The life being Christ himself, the life being God himself. Because the Bible, where, I lost my page. I'm all the way down in Ezekiel for some reason. So we've got the accuser of the brethren waiting there like a snake in the bush. You know, a snake in the grass just waiting to strike. Just come a little closer. That's all he's saying. Come a little closer. And he knows if he could just get within striking distance, he'll poison the mind. Where's the battle? It's in the mind. How did he poison Eve? In the mind. Did God say, touch the fruit and you'll die? Oh, Eve, you're so stupid. Here's what to do. Poke the fruit. Poke. Anything happened? Nope. Okay. What did it mean? If you touch it, you would die. Because if you set your mind to it, you're gonna, you might find that it's, you know, something to want to partake of. And then you might not set out to eat it, but all of a sudden you're chowing down, Eve. And you're not just chowing down, you're giving Adam. So, we've got the accuser of our brethren, of the brethren, the accuser of our souls, in the dark, luring us towards the dark. We've got the Holy Spirit inside of us, which is Jesus Christ himself, God himself, the kingdom of heaven that wants to break forth. And then we've got the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ himself, pulling us towards kingdom things. It's a battle. We live in a fallen world where the dragon has set up systems. Homosexual, homosexuality is one of the easiest ones to go with. Being promiscuous 
adventurous and rebellious in all sorts to fit in with the crowd so that you can be a part of society and someone who is known or popular or people pleaser and people loved has become a norm. If you just drink a little bit, you don't drink plenty, you know, just sit at the table with them and, you know, don't mingle. You don't do drugs, you know, you just have to be around those who do drugs and just don't say anything. You don't want to meddle with guns, you know, you just have to be around those who do it and, you know, don't say anything. If you fornicate, if you have sex, if you adulterate, you cheat on your wife, you cheat on your husband, that's okay. Just don't say anything about it. You could do it. Do it as much as you want just to say anything about those who do it. Don't. If you're, you're idolizing anything, you could be around those who do it, you know. Just don't say anything about it. Because these are the rich ones, right? I wonder why. Because the devil has come to them and said, bow down and serve him. And they will get the richest, the biggest of everything in the world. And they said yes to him. They bowed down to him. Deny Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Huh? And your soul be damned for eternity. Join the crew, man. And they do it. And they become rich, beyond rich, with all the materialism. And they flaunt and they do like if they're pooping ice cream everywhere. And all you got to do to be a part of that is do say nothing, right? Just be comfortable with it. Be ashamed of the Holy Spirit of God. And join the crew of the devil. What does devil mean again? Rebellion. If you spell devil backwards, what do you get? Lived. Do you think it's a coincidence? There are no coincidences. Because the Bible even says something about that. It says, if you desire to live a normal life, doing all the things people deem normal, you will lose your eternal soul for denying Jesus Christ and not being hated of this world to live holy towards Him. So we've got a predicament. Because we're going to read the scripture verse now with Romans 1. And we're going to read the before and after at all times. So we let the word explain himself. Before and after. Take it up in verse 31. Undiscerning. When you're undiscerning, you and you're testing to see what is good and what is bad. You're in testing to see what is of God and what is not of God. When you're under discerning, you just like a headless chicken, basically. Your head is full with air. You pretend that you don't have to test anything. Hmm. Undiscerning, untrustworthy. When someone is untrustworthy and they've proven themselves untrustworthy, you know that they are dishonest. What is Satan again? The father of what? Dishonesty or lies. If we go into verse 30... Wow, let's go into verse 29. Let's start from there. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness. You know, you look at somebody, see something, and I want one of that. 
I have to have one of that. I have to have it, you know, coveting. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, jealousy, murder, killing, yeah, hatred in your heart first, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, gossipers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Disobedient to good parents. Undiscerning. Untrustworthy. Unloving. Unforgiving. Unmerciful. Verse 32. Who? Knowing the righteous, the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Are deserving of what? Of death. What a thing to say. Are deserving of death. If you read the book of Leviticus, we'll see all of these things lined out in Leviticus. But if we read the book of Revelations and in the New Testament, Corinthians, we'll see the exact same things laid out that says it's deserving of the second death. Which is what? Hell fire. So all of these things deserving of death not only do the same mm. but also approve of those who practice them. So now we've got a problem because we don't just have people doing these things or people not doing these things but they gather around those who do these things and even though they know that it's wrong they are proof of them doing these things all right so i'm going to read now I'm going to read why this world is in the state that it is, especially with homosexuality, lesbianism, gayness, all of that, all them kinds of crap. Look what it says here. Take it up in verse 22. All right, take it up in verse 21. Okay, take it up in verse 20. You ready? For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power. And Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile, tiny in their thinking, tiny little thoughts, little brains, futile in their thinking, futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And birds and footed, four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness. An image made like corruptible man. Sinful man. Verse 24, therefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. 
who exchange the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Hmm. You know, and it's sex toys and all of that come in, right? And you know where women, on women, women with animals and all kinds of rubbish, men with men and all kinds of dollies and all kinds of rubbish. God did it. He gave them up to it because their minds were putrid. It was smelly. It was stink. It was filthy. Verse 27, likewise, the, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. He gave them up to it. Is not what they wanted? Well, very well, have that then. And even as they did, not like to retain God in their knowledge, what did they do? They did not care for God in their minds. They, they pushed Him out. They don't want to hear nothing about the Bible. They don't want to hear nothing about Jesus being holy. They don't want to hear nothing about the Holy Spirit. They don't want to hear nothing about church. They don't want to hear nothing about learning what is true. They don't want to hear nothing about becoming Christ. They don't want to hear nothing about being spirit-led. They don't want to hear nothing about worship. They don't want to hear nothing that gravitates you towards God as Jesus Christ. So it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are unfitting. Didn't he say he'll give you the desires of your heart? Is that the desire of your heart? To be against God? Then very well, the destination of your heart is hellfire. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, Sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, and strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. And now we're reading chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whatever you are who judge, whoever you are, therefore, Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. Mm. So, look what he did here. He took Leviticus... And he collided it with revelations. He took Corinthians and he collided it with Leviticus. He made a burger party. He, I mean, you know what I mean. He brought it together. Verse 
But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. So we can't be in all of this and then be judging somebody else in this because we will be judged the same way. But if we are living a holy life and a righteous life unto God, Jesus Christ, then we can righteously judge. Because the Bible says, who can judge the spirit of man but the spirit of God himself? But we have the mind of who? Christ. All right, so he said, not only do the same, but approve of those who practice them. It's the approval or the association without speaking about it, without speaking the truth. Because you know the day that you speak about it, you're going to become their enemy. And you don't want to offend people. No, you don't want to offend people. You just want to offend God. So you'd rather be ashamed of God and please the people than to please God and be ashamed and offend the people. The Lord is saying that if we practice these things, Get out of it. Depart from it. And if we're surrounded by people who do these things and we don't speak about it, but we're people pleasing and we refuse to speak about it to break some friendships and break some relationships and break some business deals and break some and break some and break some, would you rather be ashamed of God? Or would you rather be ashamed of people? Would you rather God be offended? Or would you rather people be offended? Only one is beneficial. Both are permissible. You could do either right now. Both are permissible. But only one is beneficial. We get the choices to choose, but we don't get to choose the consequences of those choices. So that's why if you're, and if we are gravitating towards God, most certainly you will find him as Jesus Christ. Because he's the only demonstration of what is blameless and holy and pure and kind and good. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. It's always been his way, and it will always be his way. So when we... When we have people, because that's who Satan will send to pull us into his, his dragon lair, that we, you know, offend God. When we have, when we have um, people sent, or that Satan sends, to tempt us, or to put in our company. That's why we say when God has placed someone in our path, to minister to, we have to do it or we're being ashamed of God. We have that chance right there. If we don't want to do it to offend someone, we're offending God right there because we're being ashamed of Him. Jesus said, if 
you are ashamed of me before mankind, I'm going to be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Remember that? Why did he say before his Father in heaven again? Oh, he was on the earth when he was speaking. Okay. So, if you're ashamed of him before mankind, because you're supposed to be made in his image and likeness, we're supposed to be me made in his image and likeness, we're supposed to be doing what he's doing, what he did, which was preaching the gospel, leading people unto holiness and him. And instead, we are being ashamed of him and just joining the crew to practice the same or gain approval of people. And then if we're not doing the deed, then we are not saying anything or being ashamed of God Father has a big problem with that he said hellfire he said deserving of death the Bible says sin when it's fully ripe leads to death because if your mind is continually sinful it's just going to lead to one thing to one thing to one thing and it's going to be like it's going to keep wrapping tighter and tighter and tighter. Remember, the more you go into the dark, you're going into the dragon's lair. Or the snake's lair. He's going to eat you. And that's most certainly where people die. When in all kinds of accidents and tragedies and... You want to know how this one ended up that way and that one ended up this way. And Satan just pushed them off to the limit. There is a way that seems right unto a, a soul or oh, man. But the end thereof is what? Death and destruction. Many are the ways that lead to hell. But narrows the way and straight that leads to heaven. Broad, broad and wide. Wide and broad. Broad is the path that leads to hell. Narrow and straight is the way that leads to heaven. Who likes to walk in closed spaces? I hate closed spaces. I personally hate closed spaces. I hate it. But Imagine if you have to go through something so tiny. It can you stick? Oh, I can't fit. Okay, that looks like a baby coming through the womb. But if something's wide, you just like... And you walk through. Now, narrow and straight. It's a requirement. Yep. Oh gosh, stop coming off. Okay. Narrow and straight is the way that leads to heaven. And few are on it. Some people take a shortcut. Some people instead of going so, they go like, whoosh. And some going so, in a zigzag. And some going like, like a snake. Isn't it a wonder the Bible says the way of the wicked is crooked? You know when a snake is not going in that it looks crooked? The enemy of our souls is Satan, and he's crooked. He's a, he's a crooked snake. He doesn't know the ways of God. He doesn't care about the ways of God. He doesn't care about holiness. He will plainly tell you he's a bad man. He's a bad, bad, bad guy. And he's proud of it. If you want to go to heaven, it's time to get straight with the Lord. It's time to allow Him inside because the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence. The violence is the battle that's taking place within your mind. Why did Jesus say, out of your belly it's going to flow living water? 
your belly is your your food organ your food you know that's where your food that's where you say ah I'm full so when the Holy Spirit fills you up and you overflow, when you say out of your belly, you're going to be so filled up that you're going to overflow with him. Out of your belly shall come liver, riv, livers, <laughs> livers of riving, that's funny, rivers of living water out of your belly shall flow. The Bible tells us that he who is thirsty, let him come freely and drink. The only one that's preventing us is ourselves. That's the only one. You're going to lose some things. You, people are going to hate you. It's going to be a little harder. It's going to be a lot harder because you're not going to be in the ways of the world anymore. So it's going to be a lot harder. Not a little harder. It's going to be a lot harder. But God is with you. And is there anything too hard for God? No. Which means that if he brings it harder, he's going to show up with his glory stronger. He's going to magnify the thing with his glory. He's going to do the thing with such a... People are going to say, but they didn't do this. And they do, they do drink and they do drugs and they do sex and they do adulterate and they do teeth and they do steal and they do bribe. How come they get in this? Because if God be for you, who could be against you, beloved? It doesn't work both ways. You can't serve God and then say you're just teaming up with the bad company because bad company corrupts good character. And when, you, when you're literally saying, well, you're serving God or you want to serve God or you love God, eventually you're going to see these things penetrate into your mind because you're allowing the serpent to come a little closer and I heard the Lord saying that I the Lord tempt no one he tempts no one remember the dragon is in the lair he's in the dark and he's saying come on over come over to the cave mouth Step in. I'm preparing tea. Would you like a cup of tea? And it sounds good. And I've got your yummy cheesecake for you. Oh, sounds good. But uh, my Bible says, do not listen to the voice of the enemy. Give Satan no foothold. I'm coming. So we we pull a fast one on Satan. We'll make him back back because you know he he knows you're gonna come in. But then we go in the other direction with speed. Speed. There are some things you can get away with. There are some things you can pull yourself out of, but sin. When it is fully ripe, it gives birth to death and destruction. And how are you going to know when it's fully ripe? How are you going to know when it's reached its limit? How? How are you going to know? There's no way to know. That's why we have to rely on God. You'll find yourself in places of depression, oppression, dark places, places of uh, confusion and chaos, suicide. You'll feel depressed and downtrodden because the Spirit of the Lord has left. You don't feel His presence. You don't feel close to Him anymore.
but he calls us to him. He says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. He who walks in me shall never walk in darkness. He who walks with me shall never stumble, or shall not fall. Shall stumble, but never fall. Shall, he who walks with me shall not stumble in the dark. Because you have the light. And the only reason you're going into the dark is to expose the workers of darkness and destroy the works of Satan. The only re reason you enter into the dark, and even if it's just a little, is to defeat the darkness. So, we don't want to be among those who are deserving of death. Because we seem to see, see, see a lot of those who walk this way and those who walk that way end up in death and destruction. Because they get into all sorts. Because Satan just crept in. And Father is saying those who approve of those who do such things. So you could be liming with some lesbians, liming with some homosexuals, liming with some transgenders, liming with some some drug dealers, liming with some fornicators, liming with some adulterers, liming with some um, bribers, liming with some liars, liming with some cheaters, liming with some reckless people, liming with some gangsters, liming with some whatever it is that you have there that you want to put in, liming with some satanists, liming with some I don't worshipers or liming with uh, you you get it and you say nothing you're being ashamed of God if you say nothing so you're not going to be loved if you're standing for heaven grow a backbone so what? So you'll be alone. So what? God is with you. Jesus is with me. The holy angels are with me. And they will be with you as well. But you have to count the cost. You have to know that if you love family over God, or if you love friends over over God, or if you love money, over God, or if you love things, over God, or if you want the approval of people, over God, you know. You know. That's what I hear the Lord saying. He's saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon and all these Vile, disgusting ways that she took the people come out of her. Lease your share in her punishment. And to come out, we don't come out ourselves. Jesus takes us out. But you're going to have to give him permission to act. Because he doesn't force himself on us. He doesn't force himself on us. He said, ask and you receive. Seek or you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You want it, you got it. Ask. All right, that's what I heard the Lord saying. That's what laid on my heart. Do not be counted among them. Do not be ashamed of speaking of these things and departing from them. Jesus Christ is Lord, and if you don't know him as the holy God of heaven and earth, the pure one, 
the Redeemer of our souls, the Savior of our souls, the one who pounded Satan's head into the ground, the one who cut off the dragon's limbs. Yeah, did you know we serve a God who is so... Oh, he's a battle axe on the, on the field. He cut off Satan's limbs. Think he's dread? Oh, he's dread. He's dread. Don't pray to see him angry. Receive him. Believe in your heart. Confess your mouth. Jesus, Lord, and you shall be saved. Say, Father, I thank you for coming as Jesus Christ. I well, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, whichever you want to say. Say, thank you, Jesus. Wash me in your precious blood. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Be Lord and Savior for my life, and I'll follow you all the days of my life. So I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my Lord, God, and my personal Savior of my soul. I forsake religion and tradition of men. And I run to you, God. That's it, beloved. That's it. Jesus loves you more than you'll ever know. More than you can ever say or show back it loves you beyond anything that you could possibly fight anything that you could possibly do anything that you could possibly see he loves you with his amazing love and he's coming back and he doesn't want us to be counted as ones that are ashamed of him so he's calling us out Seek him with all your heart and you'll find him. Let his peace as possible and sunny be with you. His grace has enough to push every mountain over. Be with you. His love that fills you up, be with you. Let him lead you to a water of baptism and water and the fire of baptism. As you by his Holy Spirit. Let him lead you into the word that is able to nourish your souls until his glory is coming. You're welcome to join us on Water to Wine Prophetic International Ministries and join our little YouTube there with so oh, it's like a treasure chest of information on word it's like a treasure chest of um how he taught he's amazing and he loves you and um if you were the only one on the planet for this very moment, he would have come and died that same horrific death on the cross just for you. That's the love of your father. He loves you so much. Angels in heaven are rejoicing for you. And now we welcome you. Welcome, welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome, welcome. Jesus name. Welcome, beloved. Welcome. Big virtual hug. Jesus name. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.